been practicing law for 30 years, been protecting the rights of the marijuana smoker for since that time. I ran in 1983 for Commissioner of Agriculture of Marijuana on a legal marijuana ticket. Let me tell you, in 1983, that didn't go over too damn hot. I said, Galbraith, how do you expect to win? I said, well, there's more marijuana smokers than there are Republicans in the state. If I can just get them to the polls, we can do that. Since I've run, I've run, ran in 91 and 95 for governor, ran in 99 as the Reform Party candidate for governor, spent $20,000 and got 15.3% of the vote as a third party in Kentucky. That was pretty phenomenal. Uh, ran as an independent for Congress in 2002, got 27% of the vote as an independent on a $20,000 budget. You know, so uh, I'm running this time as an independent for governor of the state of Kentucky. And let me tell you, I was mighty impressed to hear these words from Madeline because she's got it exactly right. Marijuana is just a symptom of the issue. The real issue is are we still sovereign human beings? That's what the American Revolution was all about. Marijuana is an iconic issue because it shows just how far the government has gone in overstepping its bounds in policing private behavior and impinging on the whole idea of what America itself is all about. You know, before America, we were all property. We belonged to the king or the queen or the warlord or whoever had the most gunpowder in the valley. And they said, hey, come in here, off with your head, there you went. There was nothing, you had no rights. You were property, you belonged to whoever had the most gunpowder. But when our founding fathers decided that they were going to set this country up and wrote the Declaration of Independence, they recognized in, in essence that we were all created by our creator and endowed with inalienable human rights. Among them, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. For the first time, they gave each of us our sovereignty. For there was the first time any ruling party had ever conceded that the individual was a sovereign thing. And they wrote the Constitution to try to, in, to, try to uh, instill the, the, the legal system to protect it. And since that time, it has been in great peril by people who seek to subvert it and make slaves of us to their will. And believe you me, the man ain't racist. He doesn't care what color his slaves are. <laughs> and the whole idea of having piss in a cup to hold a job in America is anathema to what America itself was built on. I've been at this. I was 24 years old and a milkman in 1971 when I decided I was grist for the mill. I was going to end up in prison or dead at an early age because I didn't understand the system. And if, if I, as long as I was ignorant of the system, I was going to be a pawn in their game. So I decided I had to learn the system. And the best way to do that was to go to college and become an attorney. And if I was going to do that and put in all that work, I might as well become governor of Kentucky and change the marijuana laws and try to lift Kentucky back into prosperity. <laughs> We were the world's largest producer of cannabis for over 100 years. We called it hemp. Yeah. You know, people say, what's the difference, Gatewood? And I said, well, you know, hemp and marijuana are both cannabis in the same way that Danny DeVito and Dennis Rodman are both adult males. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but uh, Kentucky was the world's largest producer, so we ought to return to it and let our farmers back into the niche of producing energy to solve our energy problems yeah. instead of giving all this marijuana, giving all this money over to the, to the oil producing countries. You know, we calculated that if you could plant 7% of the U.S. agricultural land in hemp, you wouldn't have to import another drop of oil. But you know, what, what's happened is a great, a great synthetic subversion where those people who make synthetic products have used the criminal law to, to criminalize farmers from producing uh, competitive natural products in both petrochemicals and pharmaceuticals. And a great deal of our problems today could be directly associated to the people I refer to as the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, son of a bitches. <laughs> who have never said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America or to the republic for which it stands. They're not warm and fuzzy about us or our children or grandchildren. 
and they see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of a new world order in the global economy. And that's just where it's at. And they, you know, they want to flatten the world to make us all, uh, you know, a global economy and to uh, you know, erase national boundaries. Uh, but, you know, they can't afford to give every other human being on earth the same constitutional privileges and rights that we enjoy and recognition as sovereign human beings. So they're going to have to take ours away from us in order to make us a flat earth. I ain't going down without a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So in 1983, like I said, I started my political campaign. I got up, I started getting up every day in 1971. So I've been at it 40 years. And I've uh, run for governor several times. So I've, I have a pretty good idea about what politics is all about. I gave the, the, reform, the keynote address at the Reform Party National Convention back in 2000. And, uh, you know, so I've, I've, I've been there. I've observed the politics. And after 40 years, I'd have to be pretty dumb not to have come up with at least one good idea in those 40 years. And I, I do tell the folks in this race right here, if I was ever going to lie to you, I would already have been elected. Because, you know. <laughs> but, but, but descriptively speaking, uh, descriptively speaking, Kentucky suffers from electile dysfunction. Uh, what's happened is that uh, that both parties have their horns locked up like two bull elk fighting over territory while the business of the people lays dead in the dust. And neither party can produce a candidate can disengage from the partisanship long enough to work with the other side to get the job done. And my running mate, who's a, a beautiful lady with six kids, two of them adopted, one of her natural children has special needs, so she knows where the rubber beats the road in those women and children's issues. Uh, she and I are running totally as independents, no party affiliation whatsoever. We don't want one. We don't want all that baggage. We don't want all that uh, all that uh, corruption. We don't. Really, we don't want it. We don't want it. You keep it. That's just a monster to be fed once you get to the trough. You know, we're going to start returning any of the surpluses of the state uh, over back over to the people. But the first thing I'm going to do when I'm governor of the state of Kentucky, the minute I'm sworn into oath, is I'm going to have the commander of the National Guard land a helicopter in the, in, in the front of the Capitol and bring me the keys to it. And that's the last time any one of those frigging military helicopters is going to hover over the fields and gardens of the people of the state of Kentucky. This is America, not Afghanistan, and we're not an occupied territory, and we're not going to treat our citizens like we are one in the state of Kentucky. <laughs> they got a pretty good idea that I mean it. Um, I wrote an autobiography here not too long ago uh, that I gave a, a copy to Madeline, and uh, this, this is my autobiography. It's called The Last Free Man in America Meets the Synthetic Subversion, and that's me holding M60 on the front cover of it. And so they said, Galbraith, why are you holding that M60? I said, because I'm a serious man. <laughs> you, can, you can get that uh, order one off of uh, my website at gatewood.com. But we have a hell of a chance of winning in November. Our primary is uh, this coming Tuesday. We're not in the primary. We're totally independent. <clears throat> and what interest you may have in what, how I do out there in that race is that we're going to take a giant leap. We're going to take a giant leap. We're going to go all the way to find out whether America still has a pulse or not. Yeah. And we're going to do it constitutionally. The United States Constitution does not provide you the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's in the independence, Declaration of Independence. That's not law. So you don't officially have a right to that under federal law. But Kentucky has a constitution also, just like all the other states do. But it just so happens that Kentucky's constitution is the most pro-people constitution ever written. That our people back in 1890 got so tired of being raped by the railroad companies that they wrote a constitution that protected the people and kept corporations from being running roughshod over everybody. And even now, that's beginning to fracture as our legislature keeps selling out to, to the... Uh, <clears throat> to the uh, Folks that I call the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, son of a bitches. <laughs> so.
So uh, <clears throat> what's going to happen is that the very first section of Kentucky's Constitution ensures that its citizens constitutionally are endowed with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's the number one section in Kentucky Constitution, so I feel obliged to make it the number one basis of policy for my relationship of government to the people in the state of Kentucky. I'm going to get it off of their backs. I'm going to take it out of the bedrooms and the bloodstreams and the brains and the bladders and the billfolds and the back pockets and the internet bulletin boards and put them back in the little box where they belong. I'm going to make government not a burden on the people. I think it's the role of government to uplift, enlighten, educate, and endow people with an appreciation of life, appreciation of the social compact, their civil duties, their civil responsibilities, and make sure that we address them as sovereign human beings capable of making their own decisions. And we're going to get medical marijuana in the hands of every sick and dying person in the state of Kentucky. No permit needed. Yeah. I'm going to take it out of the hands of the 10 and 13 and 14 year olds who are doing it just for kicks. We're going to give them over to the old age homes, to all the old old, old folks in the old age homes. Hey, increase the appetite, put a smile on their face, and think about the increased visitation by the young folks. Hey, let's go see Dad. So if we can do this, if I can win this, it's going to be bigger than Ventura. It'll be next to Obama's election because there is no, there was a, an independent elected governor of Rhode Island in this past one, the first one elected in 150 years, but he had been a state senator. He had been a federal, a U.S. senator from the state of Rhode Island, so he had that base, okay? But we'll be the first truly independent ticket ever to uh, ever to uh, win governor in the state of Kentucky uh, in the last 150 years. So uh, we have, uh, my, I've got a website called gatewood.com. Uh, I'm a criminal defense attorney out of Lexington. I handle criminal cases. And I'd like to represent a lottery winner or two, if any of you all know who you are out there. If you're, if you're a big dog and, and you're hanging out on millions, here's a good place to, uh, to give me a fee and let me get on down the road on this campaign. If you can drop something, 5, 10, 20 bucks in on gatewood.com, I appreciate you doing it. I'll send you a copy of my book. Uh, an ex-governor of the state of Kentucky said it was the best statement of freedom in America that he'd ever read. On the same day, an 18-year-old girl from the middle of the mountains called me, said she had read it twice previous week, and it was the number one seller at Joseph Beth's top independent bookstore in America for 11, mo 11 weeks. So... Uh, I left out 100% of the sex and 80% of the drugs, but it's still a kick-ass read. <laughs> Folks, uh, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm out here at the bequest of and the generosity of somebody that I'd certainly like to uh, uh, give a shout-out to, and that's Mr. Paul Stanford uh, here in, in August. <clears throat> he was swell enough to let me appear on his program last night. And uh, we're going to throw a little fundraiser over to Clinton. The Clinton Street Theater, what time? At 3.30. So, the 5.30. So, uh, you know, I uh, understand you all got some business to conduct at the meeting. And I just, I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Oh, Gatewood Galbraith, I appreciate you all's time and attention. Thank you so much.